All right, a tale of two banks here this morning as we look at several things to watch right now. Goldman Sachs soaring past Wall Street's profit expectations for the second quarter. While Bank of America saw a huge profit drop accompanying a miss on expectations. Let's bring in Yahoo Finance's Brian Chung with the latest. Brian, you've been covering all these big bank earnings. What are some of the takeaways here from uh, B of A and Goldman? Yeah, well, let's start off with Goldman Sachs because they're the ones that are really popping pre-market on this Monday morning. When you take a look at shares up about 4%, you can see uh, they beat on both the top and bottom lines. A lot of that was thanks to pretty good trading in their uh, global markets business, which may have come as a surprise to a lot of analysts. But when you take a look at the investment banking story, revenues down 41%, uh, asset management down 79% as well. Again, thematic to what we've seen at the other big money center banks like J.P. Morgan Chase and Morgan Stanley as well. Uh, but again, global markets, they did pretty well in fixed income, part of their FIC trading, a lot of interest rate products that they made some nice spread on. And then you take a look at the consumer and wealth management business, think Marcus. Uh, they saw higher card balances in their consumer business, which led to a boost in that business as well. But if we shift over to the other big bank that reported this morning, that is, of course, Bank of America. They did miss on both the top and bottom lines. Uh, the stock was down in pre-market trading, is now up pre-market. But the story for them, they're more of a bread and butter bank. They have uh, loans up. They saw interest income up thanks to the Federal Reserve's interest rate increases. But they struck a more optimistic tone. I was on a call this morning with CFO uh, Alistair Borthwick. He said spending looks excellent. Deposits look high. Credit quality looks still there. Uh, but at the same time, when you look at the story for the reserve releases at the other large banks, again, they're provisioning for perhaps a tick up in an inability to repay loans. We saw that as a story with J.P. Morgan Chase and Citigroup. You can see that in this chart here. But take a look at Bank of America, the red line. They didn't increase their allowance this quarter. So they might be a little bit more optimistic and not as worried about a recession as the other banks. But of course, is at the bottom here. The CFO telling me on the call this morning, reserve releases likely behind us. So if the trend, if anything, more likely to reverse in the next few quarters than vice versa. And Bank of America, typically one of the better ways to evaluate the consumer side of the banking environment as well. I mean, they were talking about net income within consumer banking of $2.9 billion. Is there, is there anything within this that we can extrapolate and really glean into where consumers are, even as we continue to discuss the risk of a potential recession being entered into? Yeah, well, I think we have to parse out what we're seeing right now in the earnings, which are backwards looking, and then what the banks are forecasting, which is forward looking. And we take a look at the last three months that they're reporting today, right, ending June 30, things look pretty good. You actually saw net charge offs decline at Bank of America. That essentially is a measure of how much they need to write off because, you know, consumers or the businesses that they're lending to can't repay their loans, meet the interest payments or the capital up front. Uh, that's looking good right now. So the spending and, and the ability to cover expenses is looking pretty good right now. But again, you look forward, you have the CFO saying, well, if anything, we're probably going to have to increase the provisions that we have, even though it essentially flatlined between the first quarter and the second quarter. But again, they are forecasting going forward that things likely aren't going to get much better. But again, they're not saying the word hurricane like Jamie Dimon was saying at JP Morgan Chase. And even then, he didn't repeat that. You know, the hurricane comment was in June of this year. When they had the earnings call last week, you had some that were saying, actually, Jamie Dimon sounded a little bit more, you know, not optimistic per se, but didn't downgrade further his outlook, even though the inflationary numbers that we got between June and July did indeed get worse. So the story for the banks is not necessarily, oh, my gosh, the recession is here. It's happening already. But you are starting to see that tonal change. I think that'll make the third quarter earnings very interesting. Um, there's one other area, um, investment banking, that I thought think is really interesting because of the year-over-year yeah. -year declines that we are seeing in that business. I think it was 48% at uh, Goldman Sachs and uh, something, what was it, 41% it was at Bank of America, I believe? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're seeing double-digit declines. And again, that's not just these two banks. It's all the banks that we've seen last week uh, as well. And I think that when you talk about the investment banking story, that makes sense. You look at IPO activity, it was essentially none in 2022. Uh, and debt issuance is not looking great either. I mean, we have to remember that we watch so closely the S&P 500, but the debt markets have been a bloodbath as well. You've seen the massive rise in yields that has been associated with the Fed's interest rate hikes in the course of 2022. That has coincided because treasuries and rates are the benchmark for all of the debt markets. No type of company is doing a lot of fundraising in this type of market. So for the investment banks that often underwrite those types of securities, it's essentially nada. But again, Goldman Sachs was able to make up for the losses in investment banking with strong FIC trading, which some people might say, well, that's very interesting because it was still a bloodbath, but they were able to, to at least find some spread, find some arbitrage somewhere. 
that's something that might be unique to Goldman Sachs. That's not necessarily the same story with the other investment banks. Right. Yahoo Finance's own Brian Chung helping us break down all things bank earnings. We've got plenty more earnings to come this season. Thanks so much.